This is a quick rundown of a little uh, closure script project I put together called Glitches. Let's see if I can show you an example. This is uh, Glitches. Right now it creates a hundred little workers that traverse around a canvas and find the lightest pixel around them and change it to a random color. So here's how that works. Start at the bottom. Um, I have a lazy sequence that calls a function to get the lightest pixel and then feeds that back into the lazy sequence um, to get the next pixel, pixel based on that one. So I use that in a function called crawl uh, that takes a, a context from a canvas, that sequence, and then a countdown and uh, calls a function that paints um, the uh, XY uh, pair from the sequence with a random color. And then if we haven't uh, worn through our countdown yet, then it uses Google Dom's uh, get window function to set the timeout on the window to be a function that will call this crawl function, <coughs> excuse me, with the rest of that sequence and a count, that countdown minus one and with a hundred millisecond timeout. So it'll just keep, uh, every time you call this crawl function, um, it'll It'll get the next um, pixel that it wants and draw it in with a random color. And we use Go. Uh, if you don't pass it any um, arguments, it'll get the context uh, for a, a canvas that I've pre-specified. And then it will also grab a bunch of random XY coordinates as starting coordinates. And it will, with the do seek, it'll take each of those coordinates and start that crawl function. So each of these, and then it'll get a new sequence for each one. So um, if with a hundred pairs, uh, we'll have a hundred different sequences created starting at different coordinates and then they'll each pick their own uh, next best coordinate um, based on a function that I used. And that function is called lightest. So we get uh, PXs, takes the context in XY and gets the valid surrounding pixels. And then lightest actually finds the lightest of those pixels based on the sum of the RGB and returns the coordinate um, for that pixel. So these sequences are continually getting us based on the current uh, pixel data or the current pixel coordinate. They're finding the next um, pixel to go to of the surrounding pixels based on which one is lightest. So we create a hundred of those to start working. Um, and then I have a function random pairs um, uh, that you can see if you call um, go without um, uh, some starting coordinates, it'll create a a uh, hundred pairs of random XY and the maximum is 300 that's hard-coded I know that's that's terrible and I should be strung up for that um, but it uses that as the maximum so uh, using uh, uh, I have a function called random that takes that max and returns a value between 0 and that max so I just take a random up to 300 and a random up to 300 vector them up and that's my XY coordinate vector uh, again, random takes, uh, this is, I had to look this up, how to get the JS math object and then call floor on that, uh, or use that to call floor on uh, JS math to get random times that by my max. So the random is a decimal between 1 and 0, or 0 and 1, and I times that by 300 and then get the floor. So I don't have like 300.05, I'll just get between 0 and 300. Uh, random px will take um, a context and an xy coordinate pair. It will get a random color and it will set that as the fill style on the context and then it will fill a rectangle at xy of width uh, 1 and height 1. So just filling in a, a pixel with a random color. Random color uh, it calls, uh, it makes sure to call sequentially with this 4. Um, it calls rand color digits, so it gets six digits between uh, zero uh, and nine and a and f, and then it, uh, it strings them up with the hashtag at the at the front, so you get your HTML um, hex color. Uh, rand color digit um, takes uh, random times it by fifteen takes the floor, so you get between zero and fifteen, and then it gets um, that random uh, index into the color digits. Um, uh, sequence that is 0 to 9, A to F. So I can just easily get one of those hex values. There's probably an easier way to do it, but whatever. I was It was late. It was like 2 in the morning when I got finished. Context uh, is hard-coded to get the context from Canvas 1. Uh, so it uses Google DOM get element for Canvas 1 and then calls get context with the string 2D to get the context. Okay. Um, and then sets the fill style to 
white and then fills in uh, and these are hard to do the the size of the canvas uh, if you have a canvas that you haven't drawn on all the data that you get back the image data is going to be all zeros for red green blue and alpha and uh, that looks like black but it's just actually blank it would be black if your alpha was 255 because alpha is zero it's blank and uh, I have a function called lightest that simply takes a map and sorts it by values takes the first thing out of the map and this is f first so take the first thing of the first thing this map will be a coordinate vector xy and a value which is the sum of the rgb so i sort them by the sum of the rgb then i take the um, the, the map entries by their rgb and then get back the coordinate um, vector for that and then take the first um, Oh, crap. Sorry, no. This will sort the map entries by their RGB values. So I'll get a back a list of those um, map entries, which are a coordinate pair and a value. I take the first of those map entries, and then the first thing in that map entry will be the coordinate pair. So get the, the lightest coordinate pair of the surrounding pixels. Val sort simply takes a map and sorts it by the second thing. Uh, if you sort a map, it'll sort the map entries. And for each map entry, take the second thing in those map entries and, and return the one that is greater. PXs, if you give uh, this a context and an XY, it'll find all the coordinates around that XY. And then it'll look up the pixel data for each of those coordinates and it will zip that up so you'll have a coordinate say a vector that is 10 10 and then you'll have um, the sum of the pixel values uh, with there so if it was white it would be 255 plus 255 plus 255 it drops the alpha so you get 765 so you'll have a vector 10 10 and that'll be the key and then you'll have the value be 755 uh, and of course we use that with val sort and lightest to return of the surrounding pixels which one has the highest sum for RGB. Um, this uh, is a, just a little utility function that gets each uh, pix the pixel data for each of a set of coordinates. And you can see we use that here. We get the coordinates that are around our XY and then we use those to get the pixel data for those. Um, and actually we don't actually use this because we do it ourselves. We do the exact same thing here we're doing here. I should fix that. Chords around uh, takes a range, takes the the uh, y minus 1 to y plus 1 and then x minus 1 to x plus 1 and then uh, gives back um, a sequence of the vectors of all nine of those um, uh, coordinate pairs however it filters out anywhere the X is negative where the Y is negative or where the XY um, is same as the one we passed in so we don't want the pixel we're at we just want the eight surrounding pixels and if any of them go off the canvas we don't want those either uh, this doesn't handle going off the maximum edge of the canvas of the right or the bottom and that's okay for what I'm doing right now um, those just be all zeros in the data and uh, they're not going to be the brightest so uh, these uh, glitchers will, will naturally avoid those. Uh, PX um, goes into a context at an XY, gets the image data uh, for XY width 1 height 1, and then gets the data object, which is a um, canvas pixel array. And Clojure can't treat um, that as a sequence, so we call a function called data seek, which is kind of hokey. It uses the JS star macro um, with that data uh, canvas pixel array and creates a JavaScript function that will call use the array subscript operator to, to get the values out. So let's say um, data subscript 0, data subscript 1, data subscript 2 and in JavaScript that'll come out as um, I'm pretty sure that comes out as an array uh, but it might just be um, closure might turn that into a call to sequence or vector or something Anyways, what we end up getting back through JavaScript um, after compile time is the first three elements of the canvas pixel array. So we're dropping off the RGB, we're keeping the red, green, and the blue. And then color digits, I just uh, defined that as a var, is going to be uh, the number 0 to 9 uh, range is exclusive at the end, and A, B, C, D, E, F. And because I'm stringing them up, it doesn't matter that some are numbers and some are strings. 
And of course, that's the beauty of closure, is you can have your collections be heterogeneous. And here I'm including goog.dom as DOM, so I can get ex access to that great stuff. Here's the HTML where I uh, set this all up. Uh, I'll have, maybe have another video that shows why you have to do all this stuff, but it's just for um, uh, Google having access to the different uh, JavaScripts. It adds scripts after these and telling it what I need and have a button that calls glitches.glitch.go that convenience function to get everything started create my canvas with canvas one and uh, and that's it there we go so that is uh, the code behind glitches um, if anybody shows any interest or puts any comments in I can put up a video that shows how to get closure script started in idea and uh, yeah and any other questions so feel free to ask